Hello. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Retro Roguery. Hi. I hope that you're having a good uh, day. And um, it is good to see people. Let me see who's here. Elixi. 33 months. Thank you so much for the resubscription. Yeah, almost three years. Soon. Um, and it's hard to believe, but also feels like it's been an eon. Um, yeah, my, I still haven't. I don't know what I'm doing with the lighting yet. I know it's not perfect, <clears throat> but I'm going to have to. That's for a day when my brain can do it. Um, Lord Portico, it is great to see you. Uh, Stephen Joyce, hello. I love the dino dance emotes. Uh, Hannah, uh, welcome. It's good to see you as well. Um, I, I hope that the zombies don't spread because I don't really want to run. Um, <clears throat> assumes that you engaged in logical decision-making. Logical decision-making. I don't know what that is. Retrogery, yeah. <laughs> An oops all, all mods episode, yeah. Um, <clears throat> honestly, I'm awake. Which is an improvement over last week. I don't know what happened. I truly don't. I don't understand what happened last week. But last week, I didn't wake up on Saturday until 15 minutes before it was time to stream, and I was in no condition to stream. Like, I slept until 3.15 in the afternoon last week. And then on Sunday, like, I went to bed at my normal time and I fell asleep normally. And I didn't wake up until 6.30 p.m. the next day. I slept for 16 hours. I don't understand. And then, of course, this week. Three. Actually, four nights in a row. I just couldn't sleep. So. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. 
I was operating on less than two hours of sleep each of those days. And of course, that cumulative. Like you, you don't. You, you need more than more than that for sleep. And then last night, I didn't. I I again couldn't sleep, and I didn't get to sleep until like 5 a.m. <clears throat> but thankfully, this morning I had an alarm clock that worked in the form of my husband, who um, is mostly over being sick, but now it may be turning into a sinus infection. Um, but that didn't preclude him from actually getting up and coming in and saying, hey, you need to get out of the bed. You don't want to be mad at yourself. Um, what I really need is I need to find a way to make my cell phone alarm talk to me and tell me to get up. I don't understand why that's not a thing. Like, I have an iPhone. It has a Siri. Why can't my alarm tell Siri? Like, why is my alarm not Siri telling me it's eight o'clock in the morning, you need to get out of bed? It's time to get up. You know, you you really do need to get out of the bed. Like, wh why? Why is that not a thing? That that's I've been waiting for. Cell phone alarms with these digital assistants. The computer just needs to talk to me and tell me to get up and that will work much better than any random ringtone. <clears throat> oh, gosh. Mathematical logic in libraries? No! <laughs> quick! Quick! Get up! You're gonna be late! <laughs> get out of bed! There are zombies after you! Um, or what really works for me is it's time to get up. Breakfast is sitting here getting cold. And then on, on, on weekdays, <laughs> for work, the thing that gets me out of bed is I'm about to get in the shower. Do you need to use the bathroom before I do? And the answer is always yes, because I need to go in there and take out my night guard so that I can eat breakfast while he's in the shower. So it's OK, I have to get up so that I can do this. Otherwise, I won't be able to do my morning routine and it's it's having something in particular that I need to actually physically get out of the bed to do. Um, <clears throat> which, fingers crossed that this will work. Tomorrow I ordered groceries that I have to go and pick up and I ordered them for before my stream time. So I should be awake come stream time. Ideally, like I would prefer to actually get up early enough to watch Herb and and Steven and watch their streams in their entirety. But <clears throat> as much as I try to have that as a motivation to get up, it it hasn't worked. I need something physical that's here that I have to respond to. Wanting to be there and watch it doesn't work for for that that type of motivation, apparently. Wake up, the house is on fire. Yeah had a professor who taught a class called Information Organization. Oh, gosh, yes. In a very strange way, involved 10 weeks of mathematical logic. Yeah, I... Elixie, I think that they were teaching a different class. I definitely took an Information Organization class. It was not mathematical logic. The, the most mathematical logic that I had in grad school was um, because I was taking like metadata coding type classes where we were learning to navigate XML through commands and learning how to build and operate um, SQL databases, which I took the class because <clears throat> I like SQL and I wanted some formal education in it. I wish I had not taken the class because what I discovered was that I could teach the class and I ended up as a essentially a graduate assistant 
uh, helping all of my fellow students to understand how SQL worked. Um, yeah, I do love SQL. I'm sad that I don't like have an excuse to work with it on a daily basis anymore. I enjoy writing SQL queries. It is. I don't know why I enjoy it. I just do. Everyone did poorly in that class. <laughs> Somehow it was all your fault. <clears throat> oh, that sounds like a familiar story. <laughs> People have complained about this professor for 20 years because he doesn't actually teach what he's supposed to be teaching. And he's rude to students and won't implement their accessibility plans and um, <clears throat> just generally makes it hard to learn and nothing happens because that professor has tenure and nobody has bothered to update the tenure review guidelines to say that if you have many multiple years of complaints against you for not doing your job, maybe you should need to go through a tenure review. <laughs> yeah, tenure done wrong. It's not, tenure is not the problem. The problem is a tenure system set up where there is no mechanism to hold people accountable for doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like our system, which isn't called tenure, but our system is essentially tenure. And if you get multiple um, <clears throat> reviews in a row where you are not at least meets, ex meets expectations, you have to go through a review and do a whole new dossier and, and all of that. Now that's difficult. You have to really not be doing your job in order to get that, but yeah. <clears throat> also per my mandatory rules, tenure, tenure, tenure. Uh -huh. Words like accountability? Oh dear. Accountability, we can't have that. Um, anywho. I, I should probably, I got started slightly late. I thought I started the stream on time and I was running around uh, doing last minute get ready things like grabbing beverages and, and stuff like that. I got back in here. I, I hadn't turned on the lights yet. I still needed to do that. I hadn't, um, there were a couple things I hadn't written the social media posts. I thought I had a little bit of time because I had the 10 minute countdown on. I got back in here and realized I clicked the start button on my stream deck, but I never clicked the start streaming button in OBS. So it hadn't actually started and it wasn't on the countdown screen. <clears throat> anyway, so I got started slightly late and I need to end about a half an hour early. Um, normally we go until 630 on Saturday, but today uh, we'll be leaving around 6 p.m. to head over to TTRP Gifts. Uh, TTRP Gifts. It's TTRPG IFS. Um, <clears throat> they are doing a lengthy stream today for um, solidarity with the uh, Writers Guild and Screen Actors Guild strikes. Um, and some of our friends will be playing some Baldur's Gate 3 over there uh, starting at 6 p.m. my time. Um, <clears throat> so I I'm going to cut my stream short just a little bit so we can head over there and, and spend time um, with the shenanigans uh, that will be happening uh, from Eric Campbell and Sam DeLev and uh, Noir uh, playing some multiplayer Baldur's Gate 3. And it should be a fun time. And um, <clears throat> I was going to say I don't really get to raid them very often, except that I literally raid them every Monday night. But still, um, I want to be able to pop in there and uh, support them while they stream for solidarity with the strikers, because solidarity. We need more uh, collective bargaining in this country. <laughs> We need more um, power for the workers. 
um, because it has been my entire working life that um, employers basically get to dictate what happens and the employees don't get treated like humans. Costs keep going up. Pay doesn't. Um, literally where I live, it is not feasible to find decent housing um, on most salaries paid in this area. Um, especially if you're looking for an apartment. Because all the apartments here are priced for student, and they're priced for uh, affluent students who can afford to go to the universities locally. Uh, which means that they're priced at about well, they used to be priced around like $800 a room. Uh, <clears throat> after lockdown and after, um, what is it, like five years now of record admit admissions uh, for my employer, without building additional housing to accommodate those record admissions, um, yeah, apartments in this area are averaging about $1,000 a month per room. They don't pay enough to afford that. And for people who are not in a position yet to where they can put a down payment on buying a house, renting is the only option. Hi, Shadows of Life. Anyway, sorry. Um, I, I just... I have a little bit of anxiety about um, housing at the moment because... Uh, what is it? 16 days ago? The 1st of September. Um, a new company now owns the building I live in. They bought the complex. We found out about three days before the transfer of ownership. And from all that I've been able to find, it seems that the company that bought us is a real estate developing company that I would imagine bought this place as an investment, will be um, <clears throat> trying to get people to move out so that they can renovate and increase prices. Which is what happened at the place that I lived before here. So, Anyway, um, we should go somewhere where the concept of personal property is not the same. I'm talking about a lost valley with um, less technologically advanced cultures that are living with dinosaurs and trying to fight off massive human-sized ants that keep hurting them. Otherwise known as <clears throat> Worlds of Ultima, the Savage Empire, um, which is which is what we're going to play today. And then, of course, tomorrow, tomorrow um, is um, as renamed Self-Spec Fiction Sunday. Um, <clears throat> and this week, because I wasn't on last week, uh, this week will be Control. I'm excited to see more of that game. Of course, Monday, we are continuing with the absolutely amazing antlered owls in the DLC of Outer Wilds. And then um, <clears throat> coming up on Wednesday will be my final Archival Adventures for September. And so we're doing a high energy physics episode. Um, James Rollins Randolph and other than who it is and that it's high energy physics, I don't really know much. I believe there's something to do with rocketry. I believe he also was a speculative fiction or, or science fiction author. I think I saw that on the notes. But um, 
amazingly enough, I have a, a student assistant helping me prepare for the episodes now. And so he looked through and found highlights and a graphic and stuff like that, which means I, ha I have less knowledge of what's in the collection um, than I have in the past, which doesn't bother me because I get to discover it on stream. Which is a button on the pranks console. Several several trap doors open under the captain, dropping him down to deck eight. How did that work? There's. I have no memory of this place. I thought our ship only had seven decks. Some sort of dimensional shift. Like, possibly this. Oh, look. I didn't have a chance to actually, like, check on <clears throat> how things were arranged and make sure that the windows were all going to be in the right spot. <laughs> um, so I'm glad to see that they are. Um, also, but I sh there's one thing I always have to fix, which is the PDF. Um, because for some reason, OBS doesn't like to remember the PDFs. So... Uh-huh. Oh, is it... Is it gonna randomly actually work? It did! Amazing. How does Crewman Gary work on Deck 15? Is our ship a hypercube? It, 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 if the ship is a tesseract of some sort, I could see how the dimensions could shift to the point where I would think there were only seven decks. Huh. Don't worry about it. I totally it, uh, I doesn't have to. <laughs> it totally wasn't built with Time Lord tech. Hey, I'll take Time Lord tech. That seems... Oh, <clears throat> I started up the game before I went live and um, didn't interact with it. And apparently it didn't like that. So let me restart the game. We're on a ship? Um, yes, it's either a ship of fate or a ship of fools, but I don't know which. Maybe it's the love boat. Exciting and new? Come aboard, we're expecting you. <clears throat> I can hear the theme song to Love Boat in my head now. How else do we go into the past and space? Um, hi game, I'm trying to actually journey onward. Notes in his calendar to change the shift diagram in the ready room again. Oh dear, that would that would be frustrating if if you suddenly found that oh yeah, there's a T-Rex. Um a, that sentence strangely made sense but wasn't actually how I a, a, a intended to end that sentence, but it it made sense. Do I have any bombs? I I think I have two. I have two grenades. They're grenades, not bombs. Will they hurt the T-Rex though? Because the way we used... I love the sub bomb emote. It's perfect. <clears throat> the way we used the bombs to kill the T-Rex before was by knocking a rock onto its head. So I don't know if this will work, but... I also don't want to blow myself up. Run away. Um, I don't think it killed the T-Rex. <laughs> it would be strange to go into a ready room and find a T-Rex. Well, it depends. Are you on a Voth ship? I don't want to waste the grenade if it's not going to work. I mean, technically, the Voth aren't T-Rexes, so... 
Run away! Run away! Come on. No! I don't I, I don't want the fight. We we did the fight. We didn't win the fight. Um Okay, I need to wait until Rex starts moving the other direction. Ah! Come on. Go away. No. No, no, no! Shoot. I hope we're not on a Voth ship. Okay, there's gotta be... something that I'm missing. We have these T-Rex heads. What happens if I toss a grenade at one of them? Um, I'm always afraid that I'm going to like accidentally blow myself up with one of these things. It did not shift the statues at all. <clears throat> The ship, the Protostar, uh, yes, in Star Trek Online. I believe, I want to say it's, is it in the Infinity Lockbox? I imagine so. That's where they tend to put the ships that most people are going to want. It's also the hardest place to get um, what you want from. <laughs> It's nice that they're releasing Prodigy stuff. Uh, now I just wish that Paramount would make it possible to watch Prodigy. Oh, it's in the um, it's in the the Protostar lockbox. That's amazing. Um, they had I got the uniform because the uniform is available or. It should still be. I don't I think it just it launched with the current event. I don't think it was like a time restricted. Um the Protostar uniform is just free in the promotions tab. Yeah. Uh I'm not done trying to figure out how to get past this thing. Infinity lockbox doesn't sound like it should be easy to get into. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things in the Infinity lockbox. It's just that um, the rarest drop is uh, one of the, like, special ships. You get your choice of which special ship you want if you happen to get that drop. It just is the rarest one. One problem at a time, please. Step one, make them pay people like they are humans and not replace them with AI. Bones. What do the spells do again? Maybe there's a spell that will help me. Um, let us zoom to page width, please. Reference card. <clears throat> Status display. Yeah, I know that. And their spell info. Yeah, drop use talk. Light eagle eye. Detect hostile. Charm enemies. Maybe that will work. Gorilla skull and chocolate. STO is releasing the I mod from Star Trek Elite Force. I've never played Elite Force. I believe um So the uh one of the ships in the newest uh episode for Star Trek Online um is a Borg assimilator and I want to say that that is from another game I never played. I don't know if it was like Armada or possibly Elite Force. I I'm not I, I don't know what game it was, um, but it's from one of the games. <clears throat> and so now it is in the game as an enemy that you fight in the current uh, most or the latest release. Um, 
which I think is pretty cool. Like they did a whole um, reskin and revamp on a lot of some of the Borg assets. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know where to go. Hang on. Do I have a special content command for this one? Or have I just been neglecting that? I think the ultimate command might say something. It doesn't talk about content warnings, but it gives info on the game. The Infinity Modulator. In Elite Force, it's a weapon designed to overcome Borg adaptation. Yes. Uh, that was... I wasn't sure what that was. Um, I got... One of my characters has one. Because <laughs> I played through the story on that character. But I assume I want more of them for, like, all of my support crew and everything, too. Uh, all right, Shamuru. Let's try a spell. No, it's not Shimuru, it's uh, Triolo. I forgot who was the magic person. Right, and this is chocolate, and that is a faz. So use a faz, offer chocolate. No effect. Why not? Let me charm the dinosaur. Oh, that makes me sad. Um, that's Shimuru. Where are? Were you too far away? All right, we're gonna try again. Oh, this feels dangerous. Use. Buzz, chocolate. Maybe I just need to take them through one at a time. I wonder if that will work. Yeah, run away. I got bit, but I made it through. I'm okay with that. I am totally okay with having been bitten by the T-Rex and passed by it. All right, this is what we're going to do. See, there's a bush there. So I don't even think, I think if you go north, you're not even going to get bit. A stone statue. I'm just looking around. Look at the stone heads. I got bitten by a T-Rex. I got better. Well, she turned me into a newt. I got better. Yes. Oh, whoops. Run away. <laughs> All I was doing was ripping dead branches off of the tree because there was something we needed de dead branches for. I don't remember what. Oh, I think it was to get charcoal. That was right. Yeah, it was for charcoal. All right, <clears throat> who's next? It's Jimmy Malone, intrepid reporter. And quite intrepid considering he's literally traversing the lost world, navigating around dinosaurs. All right, uh, 
four, we've got Shimuru now. I don't know if this is the intended way to get past this dinosaur. It feels like not a strategy that typically is required in the Ultima series, but it's working. Uh oh. Hi, Dino Breath. Turn the other way, please. Thank you. Dino Breath. I have named the dinosaur Dino Breath. Be right, UK. Thank you so much for the resubscription. Welcome back for 33 months. Oh, yay. Hi. I don't know how 33 months went by. But I'm happy uh, that people actually show up. <laughs> uh oh. So Cray got. So Cray got bit. Um. I'm saving. I made it past the dinosaur. I wish I had an easy way to heal. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I want to refer to a map. And then I realized there isn't a map of this area. It might be in the clue book, but I don't. We could read the description in the clue book. That would be okay. I don't necessarily want to, like, have a complete map. I just... I get frustrated with the view window being so tiny. Ooh, yeah, gimme. Gimme, gimme. That thing called love. I want it. Gimme, gimme. That thing called love. I need it. Sorry. Song from musical based on really, really good movie. Uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie is a great musical based on a great movie. <clears throat> All right. We are about to visit the Urali. These are alphabetical, I think. S T <laughs> Oh, there's like a map in the clue book for like the whole travel to the Urali place. Um interesting. We are on this path, apparently. <clears throat> You've never seen Thoroughly Modern Millie? Um, the movie is worth watching. Uh, it's got Carol Channing and um, Julie Andrews and Mary Tyler Moore. Um, it does have some yellow face in it. It's an older movie. Um, so it, it has um, a somewhat well-known character actress who plays a um a Chinese character and she is not Chinese herself um and it has it it definitely uses um 1920s era um racist beliefs about Chinese people uh like it that is present so I'll I'll give those content warnings um it's set in the 1920s so they're present but they also fit the time period that it's set in for them to be present but the way they're portrayed implies that they're true um it's still a great movie though um i don't know exactly when it came out originally Probably, I want to say, like, 
Gosh, I don't know. I would guess seventies, but I'm not certain. It is not a musical in the um, movie, but the musical also just has really good songs. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to read a little about the Yurali village, which is where we're trying to get to. The Yurali live in a swamp which occupies its own little valley adjacent to the main Aodon Valley. There, there they have a muddy, dirty village in one of the drier patches of the Yurali swamp. This is a very scenic and pretty breeding ground for malaria and snakes. Uh, the people take pains to keep it pretty by a couple of important means. They tend to kill or exile anyone who disagrees with them. And they bring in large, hungry dinosaurs to eat strangers. The Urali Valley consists of two strips of land, one west and one east, separated by a stretch of plesiosaurus-inhabited swamp lake. The west land is mostly uninhabited, and in the east stretch is the Urali village and access to the important Urali caves. A land bridge connects the two strips of land and it is guarded by a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex, a ferocious dinosaur the Uralis control by some mysterious means. Important note. Don't mess with this dinosaur. You can't hurt it. <clears throat> Thank you, Clue Book. People, places, and things. Uh, when we first visited the Urali village, a brute of a fellow named Darden was chief, but it was impossible to talk to him. Wamap is the name of the Urali shaman. While not the most confidence-inspiring of humans, take him back to the U.S., clean him up, teach him English, and give him a job, and I still wouldn't buy a used car from him. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> hello, historical games. Uh, he, can be, he can be persuaded to help explorers and travelers. Just count your fingers after shaking hands with him. I think... I think those comments are intended to indicate that generally not a trustworthy fellow. Mm, I'm not I, I'm not fond of the way it was communicated. <clears throat> Talk to him about the rescue of the Fabaz, the prison of Aila, and uniting the tribes. Several other tribesmen are willing to give you information. They're suspicious, but not paranoid, and will talk to you. Ask them about their secret trial. Uh, through the or secret trail through the territory and about their problems with the statue of Faboz. There are some notable exiles in your, of Urali extraction, but they are exiles. Don't expect to find them in Urali territory. They tend to live as hermits out in the Valley of Aedon proper. They include Tapuru, who we've met, a co congenial <clears throat> unusual person, let's just say. Uh who lives on a little island near the Baraco tribe. Uh, talk to him about his mind, his friends the turtles, and the hidden Urali tribe. And uh, Dennis, a cave painter. That's an artist now. Um, not the Paleolithic equivalent of a house painter. Okay. Great. Um, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, we're not going to go through all of the clue book stuff right now. I love where Fabaz belongs. Um, I don't know anything about that yet. But yeah, right now we're here. We went through the entrance. Den of Cave Bears, Crystal Gardens. Wait, no, we went through all of that already. So we must be actually in the valley. Oh, you know what? I bet we're like right at the village because we, we got past the T-Rex. We're probably like right here on the edge. <laughs> I should have just followed the path and we'd be in town. Um, ooh, self-care time. Thank you. <clears throat> Detective Zen, don't know about that. Have it swallow a few grenades. That should do some damage. Yes, except that the programmers 
made it invincible to all damage. I'll take the clue book's word on that. Ooh. Hello, stretches. Mm. Oh. So, um, while I reorient myself to the game, uh, does anybody have anything fun happening this weekend? I have, um, I have D&D, &D, and we may be able to actually get out of, um, it's the Frost Maiden campaign that we're playing, and we may even actually get out of the north? Like, we're leaving the Ten Towns area? Possibly? I'm not sure we'll want to come back. Um, we're at least investigating why nobody can leave. But we, we may have gotten to the point where we're going to get to leave. And heck, my current character, <clears throat> my third one of the campaign, um, was in suspended animation for 800 plus years, uh, trapped in a time spell. Um, He has no reason to stick around. <laughs> I made trinkets bear claws last night for D&D &D today. Oh, and then that was canceled. You have a bunch of bear claws. Hey, that sounds tasty. Let's talk to our first person who is apparently Wamap, the shaman. I needed a way to introduce my character uh, to the campaign because my <clears throat> my previous character died in an area where it was hard to have like a, an appropriate backstory for introducing a new character. Um, that m my previous character died in a uh, defunct Netherese city buried under uh, a glacier. Um, so. <laughs> The Netherese were all about magic, and so I went with the backstory of uh, that they were in the city and an assistant to one of the wizards while, like, learning, and um, got caught in a uh, time spell and had just been in suspended animation since the city had fallen. <clears throat> no, 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 this, it should be this. Still obsessed with Starfield. I, um, I started it up and created a character. I got as far as taking off in the ship and, uh, destroying the first of the raiders. And then, uh, when I exited because I didn't have time to keep playing. Um, I was being attacked by two more raiders and my ship was having some um, ship health issues and it said press O to um, repair. And I was pressing O and nothing was happening. And I'm beginning to wonder if I was supposed to press zero. But it said O. But... I'm now realizing it might have meant zero and it might just be a font issue of where I thought it was the letter O, but it was a zero. So we'll see. I I, I discovered that it is on um, Game Pass right now. So uh, that meant I got to give it a try. You see a pudgy, sly-eyed native with sallow skin. What? Why, you are no Urali. He thinks about it, which means that you are an outsider clever enough to have found your way to our swamp. I am not doing any weird voices for this guy because I have a feeling he is going to be a racial stereotype. <clears throat> he thinks about it again, then twists his face into a smile. I should wish to be your friend. Great. Tell me your name. I am Wamap. 
uh, son of Wamash. Uh, that is my true name. You see, I have given you power over me by telling you my true name. I must be your friend. I am shaman to the Yurali. I listen to the spirits, especially to the spirit Faboz, and interpret their will for the people. O is correct. Oh, you need an, a repair item in your ship's inventory known as ship parts. Well, I didn't manage to pick them up. I flew to the wreckage of the first ship and the... Like, I'm in the tutorial. And it was like, fly close to the stuff and press E to pick it up. I had not managed to find which piece of wreckage had things I could pick up before I got attacked by the other two ships. So, interesting. My fate engineer touched some weird energy and now opened a portal to his favorite shop on an interdimensional trading post they go to. Cool. I would love to be able to just like open portals to go to the places that I want to go to. I would certainly live in a less expensive place. Um, in my youth, I was captured and raised among the Nawatla. It is for this reason I am so much more educated than the other Yurali, and better suited to lead them. I begin to get an inkling of what he might want from us. We are the Yurali. We are the most cunning of all the tribes of the Valley of Aodon. That is why we live in the swamp. Ah. Strange warrior learns quickly. Okay. Baboz. Baboz is the greatest of the spirits. He speaks to us through his statue. He is the master of animals. It is his spirit that commands the mighty lizard which guards the crossing to our village. Yeah, I met that lizard. Or he would if he were not held by Darden the Huge. Uh-huh. He didn't mean to open the portal, it just happened. While thinking of the shop, ooh, mysterious powers, I like that. <clears throat> A mighty lizard, taller than the tallest hut, guards the only path from the Yurali village to the outer swamplands and the Valley of Aodon beyond. Yes, held. The statue of the great Faboz is held. It must be a small statue. Oh, you all can't see my notes. Because I'm silly and didn't realize I had not turned them on for you to see. Yes, the statue. The statue of the great Faboz. Now, you see, Darden became chief by taking the statue of the great Faboz. He placed it in a cave and used a beast from the swamp to guard it. The great Faboz controls the mighty lizard, which guards the land crossing to the Urali village. Darden says he can make the lizard come and eat the Urali. So all the warriors are frightened and obey Darden. Not me, of course for I have no fear. He licks his lips and looks around for Darden. <clears throat> now, if someone not so afraid, possessed of the kind of cunning it takes to enter your Raleigh lands without being captured, someone like you, if you were to free the Faboz, restoring it to its rightful place, then no one would follow Darden. What you would have to do is this. Go to the cave where the Faboz is held. To find it, go north of the Urali village until you reach the northern cliffs. I should write this down. Quest time. Uh, free the Faboz. And, and return it to its rightful place. Um, 
go to cave. Go to cake. Cave north of Urali village. Until you reach. Oh, go to cave. It is, um, go north until reach northern cliffs. There you will find a cave opening. Deep within that cave is where Favos is held. Also, yin up. Oh, oh. This is that's really funny. Um, the word is all, and I read also because my eyes saw the word all, the word is, and the word to all at the same time, and processed it as also. All you need to, uh, all you need do is to somehow move the fabaz from the darkness of the inner cave and place him in the ring of fire in the center of the village. I'm guessing Fabaz is heavy. Move the Fabaz. Move the Febreze uh, from the cave uh, to the center of ring of fire. Place for balls in the burning ring of fire. Alisto! Oh, put a C in front of it and put a six after it. Um, that way we may all speak with him again. Darden's power will be broken. So will, uh, we will. Mm. We will all be so grateful. I apologize. Apparently, I am having reading difficulty today. I used to do this thing in second grade where I would start reading on one line and um, I didn't track correctly across the lines. Um, so I would like start out reading one sentence and then finish reading the, sen the, the next sentence down. Um, and ultimately, they gave me glasses for it, but it never really fixed it because I, I don't think that the problem was my eyes. I think the problem was my ADHD uh, and that I get impatient while reading and my eyes scan ahead and I get ahead of myself and then the sentences don't make sense. Um, because I still do it today. <laughs> Six list or C? Um, then? Maybe. Also, I think uh, using leet speak, that would be ballisto C, which probably a different, probably a different kind of show. <clears throat> when Jimmy whips out his notebook. I'll get all that in my notebook, boss. Hope my descriptive powers are up to explaining how oily this guy is. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Was it necessary to say that? Um, let's see. All right. So we got a quest, and I bet if I ask him about Unite... Um, that we'll get more info or he'll just tell us do the thing the union of tribes what an idea one could unite them and then later much later become ruler of them all i like this idea if you choose to unite the tribes i would aid you now darden the huge will never join with you to unite the tribes never never but i would be willing if i were chief as well as shaman <clears throat> That is a simple matter to arrange. All you have to do is kill Darden. His voice and expression become more intense. Find him and kill him. I will be chief then and I will join your alliance. 
Then once Starden is done, the great Fabaz will have to be rescued. Not exactly what I was expecting. Like I knew I I I recognized that he was going to want to be chief. I didn't expect him to say we needed to kill Fabaz. Or kill kill Fabaz, no. Um kill Darden. Apparently, we are now playing Assassin's Creed. Or not. I've never actually played one of those games. Uh, I assume that when you play them, you're in some way an assassin. Uh, yes, Darden. He became chief by force. He stole the statue of Fabaz and declared himself chief. He said that he could force the Great Fabaz to send... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got all that. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Um. But I have already told you about all that. Why didn't you say that a minute ago when you literally just gave us screens of discourse that you had already given us. Sorry. <laughs> Rescuing the statue of the Great Fabaz, that is. Um, not a keyword that had come up, but the whole point from the beginning of this game was find out where you really are and save Aila. <clears throat> Yes, Darden has a prisoner, Aila. Princess of the Kurok tribe. Delightful little thing. Oh gosh, really? Misogyny now too? Um, she would be quite an ornamental mate for him. I'm, I'm not terribly surprised. He gives you a calculating look. Or do you have similar designs yourself, hmm? Well, no matter. If you wish to find your princess, you must do this. Travel south from the Urali village keeping to the cliffside. Eventually, you will find a guarded cave opening. Within, you will find your princess somewhere within. Rescue Aila. We finally made progress on this quest. Uh, travel south from the Urali village, keeping to the cliffside. Eventually find a cave. It's in another castle. Uh, princess is, is somewhere inside. I, I, I don't think it will happen, but I also will not in any way be upset if we go to that cave system and there's a message telling us that our princess is in another cave. I think we've asked him about everything that we're supposed to. Ooh. Oh, ask the other tribesmen about the secret trail. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> Great. Lovely to meet you, one map. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, well, if you must. Oh, no, I, I had one more thing to talk to him about. Hey, you're a shaman, right? Why? It is my dear, dear friend, Aeacon. Or he arches his eyebrow and looks at you suspiciously. Are you, my friend? I've told you what needs to be done to free the poor, poor Urali, and yet you return here with your task unaccomplished. Eh, I wish I could, but I've performed so many healings already today and my energies are depleted. Well, fine. There's literally only one shaman in the game that we have found that will actually heal you when you ask them to.
and it, it is quite the trek to get back to them at this point. Well, we've got paths north and south. Where's the village? Wait, grazed by what? What, what just, what just bit me? Um, did you just bite me? Oh, apparently they have, um, wow. Wow. I'm not sure. Which is, oh gosh. Wow, really? Sorry. I was going to say, I wasn't sure whether this was worse or the, um, the tribe that's the Three Stooges. But no, it's the tribe that's the Three Stooges is worse because it's the only, um, it's the only Polynesian tribe in the game. And they're the Three Stooges. Um, and most of the other tribes are actually like based on real cultures. This one, though, appears to be... Rural folk from Louisiana? This, this guy, the portrait of this guy reminds me of the Swamp Benders from Last Airbender. <clears throat> How do you know they are one? You ask them and they say... Shaman? Detective said. Points. That deserves points. That one hurt me. You see a sallow-skinned male warrior with suspicious eyes. A stranger! An enemy of the Urali, I must kill him! So Darden commands! Wait, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? I can be your friend. Use Gorilla Skull with chocolate. Man is charmed. Let's try this again. Well, that didn't work. Banjo sounds. Sha, man. Like that, Detective Zen? Yeah. I, I don't want to fight you. I thought you would be nice and talk to me, but you just said that you needed to kill me. I'm not fond of this. Hey, look, this is where the statue is supposed to go. It's like we have a well. Get well. Use well. Talk to a sallow-skinned, suspiciously-eyed native. The native stays at a safe distance and remains cautious. What does the stranger want? Well, first you can start by, let's introduce ourselves and then we won't be strangers anymore. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure, but I'm, I'm fairly sure now. I somehow knew that this one wasn't going to be great, but <clears throat> the native laughs to ask one of the Urali his name is foolishness. I would never tell you my name. Why should I give you power over me? I am one of the Urali. That is enough. Um, I have a feeling that this is, so there, there's definitely that Bayou vibe to them, but I, I'm still not a hundred percent sure, but I suspect that this tribe is also supposed to be China. 
Um, or like supposed to be indigenous folk from the region that we currently know as China. Um, <clears throat> right. Um, I hunt and fish and gather plants to eat. I harvest our lovely swamp, as do all Urali. We are the Urali, mighty in war, defended and fed by our mother, the swamp, which is bountiful to the Urali, dangerous to all others. Uh, we Urali know all the trails and paths through the swamp, which you would never find. Darden is our chieftain. Uh huh. I do not know many of the tribes. Outside our swamp valley nearby, there are the Yolaru to the north. Their black skinned warriors, very fierce. Beyond them to the northwest, there are the Kurok, cunning in the forests. South of the Yolaru, there are the Nawatla, who build their city of stone. And west of the Nawatla, uh, down below are the Disquiqui, who fight poorly but live merry lives. And there are more tribes besides those, but I do not know them. First, I must know, are you a friend of Darden, the huge, or Darden's enemy? The native looks at you closely and suspiciously. I do not know why, but I believe you, so I will tell you. Yes. I said that we are the enemy of Darden the Huge, and it was the right answer. A path runs from the entrance to the Urali lands through our village and to the cave where Darden lives and keeps Darden's prisoners. Do not follow it. It is well manned by Urali guards. Oh. Well, uh, if we must kill Darden, knowing where he lives is helpful. A path runs from entrance to Dar to, to Raleigh lands through the village to the cave where Darden lives. And keeps his prisoners. Except that we were told that Aila is in a cave to the south. Do not follow the path. It is well guarded. Okay. Instead, go west, young man, until you reach the swamp water and turn south from there. Travel south, holding close to the water. These are the instructions that we were told, uh, that we were given on how to uh, find Aila. <clears throat> Which tells me that... Uh... What's-his-face, the shaman, Covetous Shen, or whatever his name is. Um, <laughs> I think that that reference... I don't remember where where that reference comes from. Um, hi, Puddle Glum! Um, Wamop. Uh, I think Wamop was honest with us and gave us the correct route to take, which is this secret path that we're now being given. Um, except... Yes, okay, yeah. Uh, go west to the water, turn south, keep to the cliffs. Follow the swamp as it curves and twists until you are moving north again. Soon you will come upon a guarded cave opening. Oh, this is more detailed. Um, follow the swamp until you are moving north again. 
soon you will find a guarded cave opening. It is there that you will find Darden and those Darden holds prisoner. This path will lead you secretly past most guards, only at the cave mouth, perhaps, will you confront guards. Nice. I thought you were going to give us a path to pass by the T-Rex easier, but I'm okay with this. Um, do you speak of Darden's prisoner, Aila, or his spirit prisoner, the Great Fabos? Uh, well, let's start with Aila. Aila, princess of the Kurax, Darden coveted her, Darden captured her, and Darden imprisoned her. Aila is kept in a cave in the south of the swamp. You need to know about the path. Which is what we were just given. Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> Darden the Huge. The old chief died childless, so his sister's son, Darden, became chief not long ago. The Yurali looks at you suspiciously. Few wanted him to be chief. But ever since Darden imprisoned Fabaz, the Yurali are in Darden's power. Since Darden became chief, it is frightening, always frightening. Darden tells the Yurali to raid into the lands of other tribes, else Darden will set the mighty lizard upon Darden's own warriors. It is bad. Here is all the Yurali could ever want. The Urali never want to leave, even to fight other tribes. Now we must raid, we must kill, we must take prisoners. Wasn't someone supposed to get points? Yes, someone was supposed to get points from Wednesday's stream, and I can't remember who. I want... I thought Portico was making a note of it, but I may have forgotten. Yes, Lord Portico did make a note. Huzzah. Where's it from? Oh. There it is. Yeah. The name that popped into my head was a character from Diablo 3. Anyway. <clears throat> the Great Fabaz is a spirit of the Valley of Aodon. His are the virtues of courage and strength, as the animals possess them. It is the Great Fabaz that commands the mighty lizard which guards the pathway to the village. But our statue of Fabaz has been taken by Darden the Huge. Let's see what happens if I say friend. If you are the friend of Darden the Huge, you do not need to speak to one so lowly as I. The native gives you an ugly look and turns away from you. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I got all the info from you I needed. It was Puddleglum. Congrats, Puddleglum. Thank you. I, I do need to... I do need to do a little bit of work to make it so that it's possible for us to do the points on Wednesdays. Clay. A small pot. A pot. Nothing. A small pot. One fired clay pot. I could use that. I just don't know. I don't know how much I can afford to carry things there's so much that I'm already carrying. I think I'll give Lord Portico points for A, writing it down, B, remembering he wrote it down, and C, remembering where he wrote it down. Indeed, that is difficult. Who's that point I'm on? Elixir, I don't know why the points didn't work when you did them. What did you do wrong? What's the difference between those two? Was there like an extra space or something? Oh. 
Oh, I forgot we got armor. Oh, it's so exciting. Jimmy has some carrying capacity. Shimuru has. And, oh, uh, ooh. Um, Decre has carrying capacity. So let's, let's shift some of this weight over to Decre. Sorry. Move all three flaxes. Let's move some tree branches, because, you know, I don't exactly need to be carrying them. I don't want to give up my mallet, because it's important that I have, in case I run out of bullets. I think the jars are empty right now, so I don't have saltpeter or phosphorus or like a bunch of the other things that I need in order to make um, gunpowder. So I can't make any more grenades right now. Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad that loves berries and cream. Um, This is the crystal brain. Yeah, okay. Is there anything? These are just rings. I don't need them. They don't do anything special. I can't even put them on. Bye bye. They're just gold. Not like I need them. Those are diamonds, right? Yeah. Rubies. Some emeralds. Got some orchids. I don't need a tooth necklace. Why am I carrying this? I also don't need the jade necklace. See, we're in a place where um, personal possessions have a different valuation. Is this just a cloth strip? I don't need that here. I'm not giving up the frying pan, though. Got my scissors. Got a key. A key here? Um, yeah. I did all of that because I wanted to move these berries into the into the little satchel. But I bet other people are also carrying things that they don't need to be carrying. All right, we have the turtle meat, but that's a that's a, supposed to be a lure. I don't remember why we want to lure turtles, and I'm not sure how. We're all carrying things that we don't need to. Yeah. Uh, this is just cloth, right? See, that needs to go to somebody with scissors. I have an oar. I have four oars. I have a fishing rod. I'm not even sure, sure that I can fish in this game. I have the bucket for carrying hot tar, some tortillas and some beans, and the magic ingredients. Cloth armor. I don't need the cloth armor. Meat or two more jars. Uh, this is the wire screen, which is for... I think that's for collecting the tar. I don't remember, though. I'm not sure I need two of them. I definitely don't need the club. I mean, I didn't go clubbing when I was in high school. Mm. Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm lightening the load. Camera. Bamboo pole, I can hang on to that. I don't need, like, the jars. But I can't put the jars, I can't put containers in containers. The world will explode if I put a container in a container. Notebook. Camera. Okay. Uh, Shimuru. Right, we got some flax, but I just gave the other flax to Docre, so let's do that here as well. These are magnesium? Yeah. Um, move all nine of those. Just toss them over to Docre. Sure, why not? We're just gonna give everything to Docre. 
Oh, what? Move clay pots to to decay. All right. You have 40 arrows and a bow. You also have the spear, an oar, a dagger. I don't need these bottles of liquor. They are not useful. I also don't know that I need this vine, but that could at least potentially be useful. The, the liquor wasn't going to be. And I definitely don't need all the blue stones. I collected a bunch of them because I was like, these are going to be a big deal. You needed at most two and I think only one. But there's my little rock hammer. All right, you've also got a berries. I'm partly also checking to make sure everybody has food because I'm going to want to rest before we get into conflict with anyone because conflict bad. Lightning the Lord. Wasn't he a famous racing driver? I don't know. Hot tar and beans. Favorite taco flavor? Oh. Mm. That, that doesn't seem pleasant to me. It was a huge improvement when um, inventory management systems in games became click and drag. I mean, this is a big improvement over uh, inventory management systems of the time, but it's just really slow. And I, I like that you can specify that you're going to move less of them than like the whole stack, but I definitely like um, the modern improvement of holding shift to, like, tell it that you want to split the stack instead of always having to, like, every single time you move something, tell it how many you want to move. Ooh. What's all this then? Fired clay pot. So many clay pots lost their jobs. I will give them new ones as soon as I have all of the chemicals I need to make more grenades. Twelve poisoned darts. Bones. Well, can, can we move them bones? Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Bamboo pole. We'll get that. Blowgun! I will take the blowgun, and then I will take the darts for the blowgun as well, because... Hello, ranged combat. I don't know how effective they'll be, but hello, ranged combat. The statue has green eyes that sort of seem like they're glowing. Is that just a shadow? No, it's vines. Oh, if I needed vines. Um, sadly, they're not red vines, which would taste much better, I'm sure. Close, 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 close. No, no, no. Range, thank you. And Decray is also at range. He's only got nine spheres for his Adelatl. 
whereas Shimuru has 40 arrows. I'm giving the blowgun to Decray. That way he has a backup weapon uh, if he runs out of spears for his Adalatl. Use scissors on... No, not on pouch. Use scissors on cloth. Ten cloth strips! Yay! Sorry, I, I know this is like thrilling content, me um, messing around with the inventory, but it was necessary content, given that I needed to do it. <laughs> okay. I think we got all the info that we're going to get out of the village at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to look around, see if there are any... Um, uh, personal property items that are just laying around waiting for somebody to decide that they belong to them. Because that's how personal property works here. If you need it, it's yours. Bark shield. What are you using as a weapon? A stick. Maybe I should have given that blowgun to you, Triolo. Um, we're gonna just... You can stop using a stick, because there's a blowgun in here. Let's go ahead and get you that thing, equip that thing, and then get you them 24 poison darts. Right. Uh, apparently you cannot pick up the... spears. Can you? Too heavy. Oh gosh, of course it is. I've been loading you down with everything. Seriously. He's on the other side of the wall. You cannot figure out how to give it to someone through a doorway. <gasps> also, Decray has this axe to grind. Um, has this axe that I forget is an axe every time I see it, because it just doesn't look like an axe to me. Um, all right, can you pick up this sphere now? Yes, 10 spheres. Hmm. Get 11. Yes, 11 spheres. You need to ask yourself what it is. Bow is a rock hammer. Is... The shields are lovely. I just don't have anybody who's equipped with weapons that allow them to also use shields. But... Shimuru possibly if if they wanted to could pick up a shield for future use. Jimmy's got the fireman's axe and that's a two-handed weapon. Triolo. Yeah, we could get you a shield. Maybe. Move that. Move that. Rock hammer. Shimuru, or no, sorry, Triolo is carrying the um, golden android skull. Tar bucket. I don't know what weight to remove from you. Uh, move. Give the turtle bait 
to me? Where am me? There. Now get shield. Still too heavy. What is this freaking shield? Is it hiding a Hydra inside it or something? I don't understand. Aha! There. The shield weighs six. I do miss that in Ultima Six, um, when you looked at things, it told you how much they weighed. That made it so much easier. Hiding a Hydra is my next album title. Hiding a Hydra, the hit album by Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If I were ever to have a first or next album, yeah. Um, during uh, my Wednesday night games, there was a, <clears throat> a band name that came up that was just too good and I had to write it down. Um, must or it's uh the brain weasels and their first album was Mustelids in the mind um yopa and chocolate uh got thingamajiggers i forgot we came up with a second album for it i'm trying to remember what it was You can't. you can't carry anything else. Uh, get those darts. Wow, that shield is just ridiculously heavy. He cannot carry anything while he's holding the Stegosaurus shield. I think we're going to have to do without the Stego shield. The poison darts will be more useful, as will the spell components. Okay. Orchids. And lays? Yeah. I don't know why we would need those. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were there. There's searching, you find nothing? I literally moved a blanket off of a prone form. Is that a sleeping person or a dead body? But regardless, it's apparently not there. Um, that was unusual. And Triolo, grab some more of them lovely, lovely, delicious poison darts. Emerald? No, just vines. Emerald and Vine. The latest in... I don't know. High fashion? Stick. I see a digging stick. I see an ore. A flute. I mean, none of us are bards. Why do I need a flute? Use flute. Not possible. Well, I mean, that's true if you've never been trained. If you have been, it, it doesn't, it's honestly not that difficult to use a flute. I'll just take some embouchure. All right, I think we've explored the village. <laughs> and taken everything that might potentially be useful to us. Oh, there's one more building we haven't been in. It's almost nighttime, and I'm definitely sleeping 
once night comes. Because just like in real life, I never sleep in this game. But using a flute, well, that takes practice. Honestly, the flute, yes, I mean, using it properly takes practice, but it's not super difficult. Um, it is... much harder to properly use a piccolo. Um, because you have to first convince him to train Goku. Instead of attacking Goku. I got some Pteranodon drumsticks. As a flute and piccolo player, piccolo is much harder to play. Yeah, I, I played um I played the flute in middle school, and then um in eighth grade I was the piccolo player at the middle school. Um piccolo was much harder. Oh, it's the the dude. Oh, I see. They're like the guard people. You're just like a... Yeah, you're that swamp guy and you're just going to attack me? Rude. Look, I'm not attacking you back. You can just leave. I bet you're going to attack me too. Jimmy needs some healing. I'm trying to remember which spell. It's Gorilla Skull and... Pinte? Yes. Y'all, do I want to spend money on the Aldi brand mini bagel pizzas? I mean, Puddle Glum, the correct answer to bagel pizzas is um, when pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. <clears throat> Much harder to properly use a pickle. I don't know if this is your lewd or not, Detective Zen. <laughs> but the point where if everyone is laughing at something that I didn't, didn't understand, I just assume some kind of double entendre. I mean, it, it, that seems probably the best course. I can't pick up the darts. Well, dang it. I am not attacking the villagers. They are blameless. Look, I'm leaving. See, I'm going away. You can stop shooting poison darts at me. No, honestly. Oh, th those aren't poison darts. That is Triolo is poisoned. Fine. Ooh, self-care time. And I cannot think of the phrase when pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime without thinking of specifically Stephen Joy's playing Arcade Spirits. <laughs> I assume those VODs live on your YouTube and that people could go there to see them. They are amazing. They're... Uh, um, Steven playing Arcade Spirits was amazing. Thank you, Lord Portico, for the um, self-care. Right. It's got to be about sleep time. Um, ooh, we have options. Which direction should we proceed in? So there's the um head south and go for the girl. Head north and go for the spirit. We have to do both of them. 
I don't know what order to do them in. Which quest should we choose? Up, down, up, down, lady, spirit. Um, I think I'm going to go for the spirit first, but that's a, what musical is that? Uh, I know it's a musical about a Bible story, and it's not a Bible story that I really know, but mostly just because I'm not well-educated on the Christian Bible. Um, <clears throat> something about a lady and a tiger. Uh, and... I just, I don't know. I can't remember what musical it is. Oh, apparently, um, battle is now happening. I didn't want to kill them. Restore, restore, restore. Uh-oh. How much of the picking stuff up happened after I saved? I'm trying not to kill the villagers. Oh. Uh... Right. Only some of it. And we don't have to do all of it. No, no, no. Don't drop the turtle bait. Drop the ridiculously heavy stegosaurus shield. And then give the turtle bait to Triolo, because I have no idea what the turtle bait's actually for, other than baiting turtles. Um, I like turtles. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to worry about running around. The only two musicals I know that are loosely based on Bible stories are Joseph, The Amazing Technical, or Dreamcoat, and Jesus Christ Superstar. No, it's not one of those. Um, I can find it. Uh, no, I don't. Mm. Apparently there's a They Might Be Giants song called The Lady and the Tiger. It's not that, though. It's very specifically not that. It is a Broadway musical. Oh, it's from The Apple Tree. That makes sense. Oh, that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So like the apple tree is like early Bible stories. It starts out with the Garden of Eden and stuff like that. I say and stuff like that because honestly, I I do not know Bible stories. Um. Anyway, there's um. a woman has to choose between two cages. One has a tiger and one has the man she loves. And there's a song about it. I don't know more than that, though. It's a good song. Uh, <laughs> but the story that it's actually relating, I don't know. Someone more versed in um, religion would have to weigh in on that, because I, I don't know the stories. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to not kill them. Fine. Oh, I should switch to... It's hammer time. 
I don't want to waste bullets on these guys. Are we still being attacked or has the battle concluded? Okay. I didn't want to kill them. Oh, <laughs> you see Shamuru. Why are you standing on the body, Shamuru? 30 poison darts. That's a treasure trove. Um. What is it? What is it? It's, um. Series of three musical playlets with music by Jerry Brock, lyrics by Sheldon Harnick, and book by Bach and Harnick with contributions from Jerome Coppersmith. Each act has its own storyline, but all three are tied together by a common theme. Someone who believes that they want something, but once they get what they wanted, they realize that it wasn't what they wanted. Uh, common references, such as references to the color brown. Um, first act is based on Mark Twain's The Diaries of Adam and Eve. The second is based on Frank R. Stockton's The Lady or the Tiger. And the third is based on Jules Pfeiffer's Passionella. Uh... So The Lady or the Tiger is a much-anthologized short story written by Frank R. Stockton for publication in the magazine The Century in 1882. Has, the Lady or the Tiger has entered the English language as an allegorical expression, a shorthand indication of a signifier for a problem that is unsolvable. The plot summary, semi-barbaric king rules a land sometime in the past. Some of the king's ideas are progressive, but others cause people to suffer. Uh, one of his innovations is to use a public trial by ordeal as an agent of poetic justice with guilt or innocence decided by the result of chance. A person accused of a crime is brought into a public arena and must choose one of two doors. Behind one door is a lady whom the king has deemed an appropriate match for the accused. Behind the other is a fierce, hungry tiger. Both are heavily soundproofed to prevent the accused from hearing what is behind each one. If he chooses the door with the lady behind it, he's innocent and must immediately marry her. But if he chooses the door with the tiger behind it, he's guilty and is immediately devoured by the animal. Uh, so yeah, there. Clarity. <laughs> anyway, it's a good musical. As far as I've not actually seen it, I've just listened to the music and it has good music. There's no way I could pick up 30 darts. Um... Yeah. Does anybody have that kind of carrying capacity? Decray, maybe. I still don't think you'll be able to get 30. Uh. Ooh! Apparently. <laughs> Decray is strong. Decray carry 30 darts. Easy. Um. Let's move Shamuru. 27 more darts! Did I say wounded darts? I meant to say poisoned darts, but I may have said wounded darts. It doesn't matter. 30 more. Golly gosh. Now this, now it's too heavy. Hmm. And I can, I, I have to pick them up in the batch. It's fine. Uh, not a huge deal. Um, we're going to be using a lot of peen day, it looks like. I keep having to cure people of poison. Okay, I'm continuing northward looking for cave entrance. Nobody said anything about guards patrolling the northern route. So yeah, apparently not a Bible story. Just a story. But because it was in a musical called The Apple Tree, and the first act was all about Adam and Eve, I guess I assumed it was a Bible story. Into the unknown. 
Okay. It's cave time. Cave tastic. Uh quick check on uh because we are getting ish towards the ish time. And the channel just went live, but they haven't started yet. Um, so we've got a few more minutes before we'll head over there. Once I see faces on the screen, then we'll head over. I, I want to get some sense of how hard it's going to be to move this. Um, uh, oh, hi, Puddle Glove. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be heading, I, I'm ending slightly early because we're going to head to uh, uh, TTRP Gifts um, because uh, they're doing a series of streams today in solidarity with the striking workers, um, the writers and uh, actors strikes and um, coming on as soon as they actually get started, um, is our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stream punk friends, uh, Eric Campbell, Sam Delev, and Noir, um, who are going to be playing some Baldur's Gate 3. And so I figure it's a special treat. We'll end a little bit early and head over and support them while they support the strikers. <laughs> um, actually, Detective Zen, in this case, I think you are probably 100% accurate. It is most likely, in this case, TTRP GIF, or uh, TTRP GIFs. Because TTRPG and that G is pronounced G so it would be TTRP GIFs which hurts to say 29 poison darts what's funny is um, the creator of the GIF um was not creating peanut butter. Uh, sorry, the creator of the animated um, um, graphics file that we know today by GIF slash GIF um, says that it's pronounced GIF. Which just hurts. It hurts. Why? Why would you lie to us about how this word is pronounced? All right. They have just gone live. Let me uh, finish the ouchifying of these people. End the battle. Save the game. We're going to end it there. <laughs> and we're going to continue exploration. Uh in one week's time as we try to um, set things right in this place. But let me go ahead and pop to the credits real quick. And this is going to be a fast eject. I think that was where the pronunciation was confirmed. So, yeah. I don't have a CompuServe manual. Oh, gosh. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I hope I wasn't too completely scattered the entire entire stream but um i had a good time i feel like we're making progress in the game um i'm excited for this one to end i'm enjoying playing it despite the sometimes problematic content uh but i'm ready for it to end because i want to get to martian dreams um, but anyway thanks everybody for joining me today i'm very very happy that you were here tomorrow at 1 p.m eastern I will be live playing Control. Uh, Monday will be Outer Wilds DLC. Wednesday, archive stream happens, and then back here on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern for more 
of uh, Worlds of Ultima, The Savage Empire. Thank you, Be Right UK and Elixir, uh, for your resubscriptions. It is hard to believe that we are approaching three years at this point. Um, and of course, thank you to my moderators. Thank you, Was Not Worth It, for being a subscriber over on Coffee. Um, we are going to be raiding over to TTRP GIFs. TTRPG IFS um, <laughs> to uh, stand in solidarity um, with Eric, Sam, and Noir as they play some Baldur's Gate 3 in support of the Writers Guild and uh, Screen Actors Guild strikes. So um, please join me for the raid. I do have wonderful raid calls that you can drop in chat when we get over there, uh, subscriber and non subscriber varieties. So, um, Feel free to copy and paste the uh, one that you wish to copy and paste. And um, yeah, thank you much, Lee, for being here. I hope I see you again soon. Until I do, get out there and do some shenanigans, everybody. <laughs>